Hi, I'm Dr. Wong at Southeast Veterinary Neurology, and today we'll be covering discospondylitis in dogs. Discospondylitis means infection of the intervertebral disc as well as the adjacent bones or vertebra. This infection can be caused by bacteria or less commonly fungus, and while it technically can happen to any animal, we primarily see it in dogs. Certain dogs tend to be more at risk, specifically young intact males of the following breeds. The Great Dane, German Shepherds, Boxers, Rottweilers, Doberman Pinschers, and English Bulldogs. The most common sign of discospondylitis is pain, with more serious cases showing neurological symptoms. Signs can include vocalization when touched along the back or neck, <laughs> reluctance to move or to do their normal activities, acting stiff or trembling or shaking, hiding, symptoms of fever, lethargy, or loss of appetite. Sometimes we can see weakness or difficulty walking, and in severe cases, even paralysis. Signs can be subtle at first. Maybe your pet's just moving a little slower or seems hesitant to jump onto the couch or into the car. But these small changes can be early warning signs, so it's important not to ignore them. As signs progress, many dogs develop a poor appetite, lethargy, and weight loss. The intervertebral disc and the vertebra can become infected in three main ways. The most common is called hematogenous or through the bloodstream. Basically, anywhere that a dog has an infection, that bacteria or fungus can make its way to the intervertebral disc and the vertebral column through the bloodstream. Things like a skin wound, a urinary tract infection, or even a post-surgical infection could result in discospondylitis. The second main way is through direct contamination. This happens when bacteria or fungus enter the spine or vertebral column directly like from a deep puncture wound um, or from a surgical procedure involving the spine. The third main way is migrating foreign bodies. Sometimes something small like a contaminated grass on can enter the body through inhalation or ingestion and then it migrates through the body and eventually ends up at the vertebral column. Bacteria are the most common cause of infection, especially Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, and E. coli. However, in German Shepherds, we see a higher risk of fungal infections, particularly Aspergillus, which is much harder to treat. Discospondylitis can sometimes be diagnosed on plain x-rays. It shows up as lysis or destruction of the ends of the vertebra, called end plates. Sometimes we see widening or collapse of the intervertebral disc space and sclerosis of the end plates. However, sometimes it can be challenging to diagnose discospondylitis on x-rays alone. MRI is the best way for us to catch it early. It allows us to see subtle changes to the discs, the bones, and the surrounding soft tissue before the infection causes serious damage. Since discospondylitis can affect multiple discs in the same dog, MRI is quite useful in finding all of the affected sites. Lastly, MRI is also used in planning for surgery, which is sometimes necessary. Once we've confirmed discospondylitis, the next step is figuring out what infection we're dealing with. Is it bacterial or fungal, and which bacterial or fungal organism is responsible? We do this so that we can select the appropriate treatment. This may include blood and urine cultures, biopsies, and testing for brucella, an uncommon but extremely serious bacteria that can spread to humans and can cause lifelong complications. So what can we do about discospondylitis? The good news is that most cases of bacterial infections that have mild pain only recover well with early and aggressive antibiotic treatment. Treatment focuses on four key areas. First, clearing the infection. Depending on the infection, antibiotics or antifungal medications are used. We often continue treatment for up to a year because it's very difficult to clear bone of infection. In some cases, treatment is even lifelong. 
The second aspect is pain management. We use anti-inflammatory medications and pain medications to keep your dog comfortable as it heals over the next few weeks to months. The third aspect is supportive care. If your dog is severely affected, you may need to help with changing positions, eating and drinking, bladder management, and physical therapy. Because affected dogs can develop spinal fractures or luxations, supportive care should also consist of activity restriction, including crate rest, sling walks, and a low impact lifestyle. The fourth aspect involves follow-up evaluations with your neurologist. This can be a very long process and relapses are possible. Regular rechecks and follow-up imaging help us ensure that the infection is fully cleared. If the infection is causing spinal cord compression or if we aren't seeing any improvement, surgery may be needed to remove the infected tissue and relieve any compression on the spinal cord. Most dogs with bacterial discospondylitis have a good prognosis if we start treatment early. For dogs with brucella, fungal infections, spinal fractures or luxations, or severe neurological symptoms like paralysis, the prognosis is more guarded. Fungal infections are particularly guarded. While many dogs respond to medications, some don't. Even among the dogs that do respond, many require a lifelong treatment. If your dog is showing signs of back pain, don't wait. Getting a diagnosis early can make a world of difference. While discospondylitis is a serious diagnosis, it's also treatable, and with the right care, many dogs go on to live happy, comfortable lives. We can help. At Southeast Veterinary Neurology, your dog's health and happiness are our top priority.